We'll play first. It's got to be one of the worst hands I've ever seen. This one's much better. No turn one pilgrim is good for us. Okay. Boy, I would have liked to play that right there. Boy, would I. Well, I'm glad he's not doing anything about it. Alright, so. Yeah, we want Interloper. I was going to say Ironsmith because he doesn't seem to play a lot of spells early, but. I just. I think we need to get the Interloper online. He doesn't have any flyers, and it takes him a while before he gets the spiders. So. Let's get Interloper in while while we can. Follow it up with Armored Scab. Yeah, that's pretty good. Especially since he got Knot of the Bone. Both Knot of the Bones in there now. So that's bad news for us. We were kind of hoping those cards were on the bottom of his library. No such luck. Alright, so we'll swing in. Don't have our three guys flames. I mean, I'm fairly confident at this point I'm comfortable with uh, flipping our screeching bat next turn. Depending on his plays, of course. Could also be to our advantage, just try and get in for four overhead the whole game. It's not a terrible idea either. I'm, I'm not going to block the armored scab. I'm not even going to attempt to play into any sort of trick. I don't see that as being a good idea. So I'll departure in the yard. Um, well, he's got the one blocker. Yeah, I think I actually feel comfortable transforming Screeching Bat now. Don't have much going else going on elsewhere. Oh. So I got two creatures in the yard, so that's kind of a good sign. Now our blood crazy neonate can kill his other armored scab. That's also good. We look okay right now, but things could certainly get bad fast. Crossway vamp would be beautiful next turn. got double knot of the bone so he has one two three cards in the yard so you're just gonna silent departure now buy himself a little bit of time yep I'll accept that He's gonna get a better knot of the bone after he blocks. If we play, a, if we get a mountain, I'll play the crossway vamp. That really sucks. The mana issues this game have really cost us. If we'd gotten in there, my God, he would have been. Oh, the shape he would have been in would have been so much worse. He would have been forced to preemptively play his knot of the bones. We would have just looked so much better, but we don't look as good now. 
So now he can gain eight per knot of the bone, which means he's really at uh, right now at 17 life this turn, and then potentially 25 life the next turn. Not seeing this double mountain is killing us now. It's actually making us lose this game. That sucks. And an invisible stalker. So, if he gets to his butcher's cleaver range, if we don't see our tribute, we are in fact just going to die. That's sweet. All right. This plan it is. Doing this plan again. I'm not sure I agree with this this plan on his part, but he's obviously just looking to gain a bunch of life and actually he probably has spider spawning, which means I really wish I had night terrors in my hand right now. That would have just totally ruined his his day. But instead, I, I have a feeling we've got a spider spawning on our hands here, in which it's going to be really bad. For us, that is. Uh, he's going to get six spiders. I mean, there's a chance he doesn't have it, but... Might be wishful thinking. That's spider spawning mana, and that is a spider spawning. Okay, so not looking great now. Looking a lot worse now. But we can be defensive, try and do what we can. Um, at least Bloodline Keeper is going to be transforming soon here. So, wow, tribute. That, uh, that doesn't do too much. Uh, I think we'll play the Village Ironsmith, why not? If we transform him, he will be an effective uh, spider killer. But now, unfortunately, we have to just hang back and get two more vampires so we can flip our Bloodline Keeper. Definitely don't want him to have an out for our Bloodline Keeper. That would be kind of a big deal. Alright, he's just cashing out his Gnaw of the Bones now. Don't care about that. Cultist, that kind of sucks, but... Actually, that really sucks. I, I want to kill that cell of a cultist like you would not believe. I mean, if you, yeah, he can't really attack in, because then I could probably do too much damage to him next turn. Um, Tribute to Hunger looks absolutely dreadful right now, but in that last game, hey, it looked like it was going to be good, you know? It looked, I, I agree, it looks absolutely terrible here, but... Oh, this actually isn't a vampire until I transform it. I see. Do I want to transform it now? Or do I feel like I'm going to make better use of my mana? I say we transform it now. Uh, it would have given me a crossway vamp, but I just don't think that's a big deal. Okay. Well, I, I mean, I am going to be able to do some cool stuff next turn. I mean, with the Bloodline Keeper, my vamps are going to be huge. I'm going to be able to get in for huge. 
he's gonna have tough blocks. Um, if he misses his land drop here too, that's a, even a huger deal, because then he can't flashback his spider spawning. Still has a knot of the bone that can gain him a million life, but we look okay right now. He doesn't have good attacks. Oh, very happy he doesn't have his invisible stalker anymore. Or that would have just been the game. He's got to be equipping the sell off occultist here, but actually no, because then Iron Fang takes care of that. So actually, we're we're still looking good. Gonna be able to get in with our dudes very shortly here. He's keeping his knot of the bone mana up at the moment. Looks like he's having a hard time making decisions here so that's that's always good okay is he equipping or what's he doing he is equipping is he attacking oh my god he screwed up so bad if he does please it'll be the worst mistake of your life please do it That will help us. It would help us so much if he did that. I don't understand this strategy at all, but I like it. I like that he's doing this. Change his mind. Please keep attacking with the occultist. Yeah. He figured it out. He figured out that was the worst play he could possibly do, so... That's good. Or that's bad for us, but good for him. That would have, uh, God, that would have helped tremendously. Just completely take that lifelink offline. He's still just desperately looking for another mana, and he's like right back in it after that. Um, Alright, so we need to flip our Bloodline Keeper now. I mean, we have to do it on our turn, but regardless. Still good. What's the flip side do? Can I still? So I can actually make a vamp and then transform or transform, make a vamp. Either way, whatever. You get what I'm saying. Nope. Okay. Okay. So I believe I put a vamp out. And get in there. I can do this anytime, right? Yeah. Hopefully, you forgot about Bloodline Keeper's sweet ability. because that's what we were playing around and it totally appears that he did so that is great so that worked out really well He's gonna mill the crap out of himself, which sucks. I mean, we can hope he doesn't hit a land. It's not entirely plausible, but possible. I would have loved to have been able to attribute to hunger him this turn, but 
Didn't look like that's possible. Could also just do the crossway vamp here. Get yet another vampire, because vampires you control, right? Yeah. Alright, let's just play the crossway vamp. Guess I could have done that on the occultist and then gotten in with the iron fang too, but. Miss Land, please. Still hoping Bloodline Keeper can get us there. Alright, well, it doesn't look like he's doing spider spawning. Unless he has another one. Two of them would do it. Alright, good. 35. Can deal with that. He definitely does not have a good attack here. How much damage can we do? If I crossway vamp his... Oh, he's got another play? What's he got? A big dude? He's doing this, so I'm assuming it's Scab Goliath? Scab Ruinator. That's pretty good, too. But kind of crippled his spider spawning a little bit. So I'm not sure how great that really was. Right, unfortunately, two spells were cast, so it looks like Iron Fang is looking a little bit worse. Rakish Air. Wow. That actually is pretty dirty. I can do crossway vamp plus rakish air. How much can I get in for there? I've only got five minutes and my opponent's running low on time. Suppose I just do this. Make it so Ruinator cannot block. Do rakish air. Could get in for 5, 9, 13, 17, 21. That's pretty huge. And all my guys get buffed. But I'd probably like to just keep pumping out vamps for now. I mean, I just don't have lethal fast enough quite yet. Um, so, yeah, that... So our guys are getting buffed more. He can know himself more. He's got the memories journey, so why not? We're at least still pumping out some vamps here, so that's good. So cast the turn. See what his plan is. One, two, three, four, five. Alright, he's got spider spawning. He can do it for one, two, three, four, five, six now. It's not as devastating as it was in the past. Um, yeah, I think I just take five here. He's going to spider spawn. No more gnaw to the bone for our opponent, so that's good. 
He's also low on time, as are we. Okay, so make another sweet, huge vampire. Is there anything I can do about that Selhoff occultist? I don't think there is. Which is kind of unfortunate. Another land here doesn't look particularly good, but we'll play it anyway. Um, okay, so I think we get in with all of our relevant vamps. Did I forget to get in with him? I think I did. That's horrible. Um, I don't really want to trade an occultist for one of these crossway vamps, but might be necessary at this point. Just really don't want him to gain life. Let's just do this. All of our flying vamps. So then it's just spider blocks. Opponent's running low on time, so we might be able to just time him out, which is a legit strategy <laughs> when your opponent's playing spider spawning and has a hard time making decisions like this. Thankfully, his clock, I mean, his clock is very low right now, so if we can just survive, we'll be fine. He's just blocking like that, okay. Yeah, that's fine. I think I can handle that. Guy's getting bigger. He's milling. definitely been a long and involved game. Both times, um, I mean, I, f I feel like, honestly, the only way that our deck had the chance to beat him was because of Lord of Lineage. Uh, just spider spawning, I feel like, is inherently powerful against black red aggro because it runs cards that go late like uh, Knot of the Bone and early removal like Silent Departure and Armored Scabs and stuff. So they're like, you know, well prepared to deal with uh, red black aggro something I feel is important. Alright, we get to flip here. Which is sweet, because now he can't gain life from his occultist. And our opponent has less than 10 seconds. So we just took the game. Unless this card somehow just wins him the game. No, that's not going to do it. Would have come close, but didn't do it. All right, we got round two, so that's sweet. Um, this this was a particularly hard match for us, so I'm I'm amazed. I mean, as as you heard me earlier in this game, I I felt like we'd already lost by turn four or five or whatever. So I'm I'm absolutely amazed. I think there were some bad plays on his part that actually cost him the game, like preemptive knot of the bones, especially and preemptive scabrunator. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Preemptive claustrophobia is probably an important one too. Both times, this successfully baited out his uh, claustrophobia, allowing us to Bloodline Keeper and win off of Bloodline Keeper. So, pretty amazing. Okay, I'll see you in the finals.